<laughs> Take one. Hey guys, we're right here. One half of the gray haired guys and geese. Oh, I have another gray haired guy in gi here with me. Just taught a fantastic class. Very good friend of mine, Mark Konechny. Uh, what can we say? Uh, second degree black belts in Japanese Jiu Jitsu, Yoshinru Bushido Kai lineage, brown belt Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, submission grappling coach, original Bloomfield member. If you know what I'm talking about, that's where submission grappling and Muay Thai started in the province. Uh, wrestler from university, high school, high school, high school wrestler. He just taught a fantastic class here at Manoma Athletics. We're just going to quickly talk because we kind of keep this uh, conversation short to about maybe 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Uh, our feelings on martial arts and talk about Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And of course, right now, because we're both, I'm just a blue belt, he's a brown belt, uh, but we're both uh, instructors in Japanese Jiu Jitsu. Anyway, so Mark, I start off everyone with. Uh, Let's see your, your, where you started. What happened? Where did I start? Real quick. Uh, I used to have a friend way back when. My martial arts started way back when. I had a very good friend of mine. Uh, I think I was about nine or ten years old. Uh, he originally got me into Taekwondo. Oh. I did like, uh, I want to say, a fall semester of Taekwondo. <laughs> uh, I was busy with hockey uh, and playing soccer in the summertime, so I never really went back until high school with the same friend. Uh, start, he was on the wrestling team and he's like, Hey, why don't you come out and try that? Oh. And from there, it just started a love of the grappling arts, combat and, sports, yeah, combat like sports and it's something I always really wanted to do. Um, uh, went through my university career. Uh, I played rugby and then at the end of uh, my rugby career, I got injured and it was like, Hey, this is where I found jujitsu. Um, right. I found I found uh, your club Japanese jiu-jitsu by the way. Let's we're talking about that first <laughs> Went to uh, Showed up at Bloomfield. I want to say it was 2003 and uh, From there it was just uh, ev Everything was there whether it was kickboxing whether it was jiu-jitsu submission grappling We had uh, wrestling too because wrestling also for those club. that don't know the Metro amateur wrestling club was there uh, co-founded by by uh, Mike Hallman, and so we shared space with them. We had uh, Metro Amateur Wrestling, and then we had Bushido Kai there, and that's kind of where the crossover came with submission grappling because we obviously took for them, and uh, some people that started there, TJ Grant started there. He was wrestling at Bloomfield with Metro Amateur Wrestling Club. There's, so. there's actually a lot of the uh, guys that, like TJ Grant, uh, um, even uh, Joel Jakar, I remember he started yes. way back when. With us, he came in through the club and then uh, went down to Titans. Uh, I know Nathan Stever when he moved to Halifax, the same yep. sort of thing. He came through our club. He actually started the official, I think, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Yeah, Nathan Stevers is a black belt, uh, Henzo Gracie Jiu-Jitsu under Titans. He's in Bathurst? No, way up in New York. Uh, Miramichi, I think he does Big River Martial Arts. Now. Yeah, anyway, yeah. he's the guy that started the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu program at our club originally. Yeah. Also a Japanese Jiu-Jitsu guy, too, that crossed over to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so you were at Bloomfield. I was at Bloomfield. I remember that's really when I want to say that the guys at Titans were really starting to grow their club. Uh, down off of Titus Avenue. Yeah, uh, I know we did. We pizza. had our yeah, we had our submission grappling uh, program. I remember training Thursday nights uh, after the Japanese Jiu Jitsu class, and we had an hour, an hour and a half of submission grappling, no gi submission grappling. Yeah, and from there we went to. Moncton, we went to St. John. We yeah, we competed in tournaments together. Yeah, Ty and, uh, Turo, yeah. Jesse Allen was there as well. Yeah. Steve Greencorn. Yeah. Uh, a bunch of other all people the, we can't remember. <laughs> all the original guys yeah. uh, from, I want to say from Bushido Kai, uh, started. And these were some of the earlier grappling tournaments in New Brunswick yeah. at the time. Brett Nickerson hosted one that we went to. Yeah. I mean, Travis was there. Travis, you know, and Gerald yeah. was there. I mean, there was a whole bunch. I remember fighting on the puzzle mats. Like yeah. now, the the, the the judo tatami are, is pretty much what everyone fights on now. Yeah, trains on. There's there's some movement with the gi, but on those puzzle mats, it was like you're kind of getting stuck uh, along yeah. the way. You can we really did that move. tournament in New Brunswick where we d did the cage match. Yes, we fought in the cage. Yes. I, I grappled that guy. This guy picked me up when he went to slam me. He just let me down real easy, and I was like, "Oh, thanks, man." <laughs> I, I actually remember that because I drove up with Jesse Allen. Yeah, uh, and we did it. It was the it was a tournament, a submission grappling tournament. And then it was a takedown tournament, like almost like wrestling yes, style. I have that on video somewhere. Yeah. yeah and you it was awesome. whipping the guy around. Shoulder, big time. He did a drop Sionagi on the guy. I remember that. Yeah. It was 
It was it was super fun. That was back in the days, I guess, before like the original the road. That was before, um, way before, like East even Coast a buy a tournament. Yep. Where these were like a long time ago. And for anyone that obviously doesn't know history, I'll do about it later. But uh, real quick, the Japanese jiu jitsu we had at Bloomfield School was a, there's so many styles of Japanese jiu jitsu. It's ridiculous. Some are really hokey and stupid. Some are really good and hardcore. Ours was almost like a fight club. And uh, we'd go all the time and just smash each other and throw each other down. And I guess like really early MMA. It was the thing I, the thing I liked about it is the reason why I went to, first to Japanese Jiu Jitsu. I did have a friend uh, who trained over at um, Titans. He was a guy that I formerly played rugby with and he started training. He was a white belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. He lives now, I think, in Dubai. He's a black belt under the Nagara brothers. Oh, wow. Anyways, he said, hey, why don't you, why don't you, try Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And I did my research and I was like, I kind of actually want to learn how to strike as well. Yeah. So, and I remember when I called you the first time, I was like, so like, what do you do? Take, you explained to me, we do takedowns, we do striking, we do groundwork, wrist locks, weapons, everything. And I was like, oh, that's what yeah. I want. That's like what I want. like a good mixture. Yeah. We like doing the fun traditional stuff that's not very practical. It looks very martial arts, but we also like doing, hey, you want to fight? Yeah. And Let's that's, fight. Let's just go. And that's where, like, in, 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 I know a lot of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu guys will say traditional martial arts, you don't have, you can't actually apply it properly in, in the sense of like a, a fight environment. I know that when we used to do it, we'd put on the gloves, the shin pads, yeah. and a mouth guard, and everything below the waist. Yeah. Right? So we just fight to take down, you know. Yeah, we didn't want to damage anything. That's damage why it was. Below the face, exactly. <laughs> but it was it was it was live sparring, yep. basically uh, doing like in a in the class doing the self defense circle. I remember uh, I remember doing that, and that was like getting put on the spot, and that's where your your adrenaline would kick in a little bit, and you'd be like, oh, okay, I got to defend myself against everybody from this size. Think of one side. person in the middle, maybe you who's watching, and there's ten or fifteen people in a circle. And we don't pick who, just someone randomly comes in and attacks you. They can strike, they can kick, they can grab you by the throat, they can choke you. You don't know who's going to do it. And your whole objective, we call it self-defense circle, is just to defend yourself. And uh, it's a high-stress environment. As you, know, as you know, when you're under stress, a lot of these skills deteriorate pretty fast. I mean, it's not life and death stress, but it's stress. These, these little small movements like you go back to you revert back to your original training what you yeah. learned and the big gross motor skills and i found i actually found it beneficial for me um su surprising even coming up like I, i'm a fairly athletic guy but i've always been the thing with martial arts is that it's given me confidence to kind of walk around with uh with more of a i want to say a proud chest meaning that i'm not really worried around what's around the corner what's exactly. what's out there i don't I don't like, personally, I don't like big crowds. I don't hang out in big crowds because yep. too much can go wrong. But whether it's Japanese jiu-jitsu and now kind of continuing my, my journey with, with Brazilian jiu-jitsu, it just kind of gives you that confidence. You leave the, the training room and you're like, I feel confident as an individual. Yeah. Um, you're, you're with some, actually, I've, the best people I've ever met have been martial artists. The nicest, no ego is just... Martial okay. artists, that means all arts. All arts have something to right. offer. What it really, for me personally, it all boils down to is the instructor. Absolutely. If, the, if you have a crappy instructor that just teaches chi power hits, well, then you're in trouble. But if you have an instructor that's like, hey, I got this bat, let's go outside, and I'm going to really hit you in the head with it, do something. You know, or, well, it depends on the instructor. <laughs> and, that's, and that's one of the reasons why for, for years, like, I, 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 I like the way you ran the club. I liked your mentality um in terms of we can go hard when we want to go hard but we can go slower when we want to go slower you're just for me you're just a you've always been a great guy you've always been a great friend yeah, and i appreciate that, that. Yeah. as a mentor even now as as, as as i'm getting older and going through a, a different path in my journey you've always been supportive of that and to me that's made a huge yeah, uh, that, awesome. that, that makes a, a huge difference not just in my like personal growth but again as my yeah. in my confidence as, as an individual so uh, I, I thank you for that. Word. <laughs> Peace out, all that stuff. No, it's yeah. all good, man. So, uh, okay, so real quick, because we keep these conversations short, uh, you've trained all over different clubs. You currently train a little bit everywhere. I know you're at Halifax BJJ, yep. you're at Maritime Jiu Jitsu, you go to Josh Presley's, go to TJ Grant's sometimes, yep. Jake McKenzie's. I haven't been to Jake's. Okay. Uh, the other place that I've been to is, is Fit Plus. But yeah, oh, uh, Fit Plus. a few of us just go train around. Uh, we're now, 
I'm centered mainly out of uh, Halifax BJJ. Yeah. Uh, I came up through uh, Bish uh, Bishido Kai or McKinnon Academy of Martial Arts and then what turned into uh, Maritime Jiu Jitsu. Yeah. Uh, I'm Excellent. now at Halifax BJJ. Um, Go to been over to TJ Grant's great atmosphere. A actually, pretty much everywhere I've been across yeah. the city has been phenomenal. Everyone's been super welcoming um, and really open to, to to training, learning off of each other. It's been it's been phenomenal. Which so. is you know it's interesting because true martial artists. Yeah, true martial artists, and most all Brazilian Jiu Jitsu clubs are open and welcoming. And back in I know when I was in like the late seventies, early eighties, you know clubs just stuck to themselves. If you were a Shotokan karate, you couldn't go to Weichiru karate because they'd be like, I'm going to kill you. Or, or Taekwondo. <laughs> Remember, Taekwondo back in the late 70s, early 80s is what Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is now. Yep, Meaning okay. back then, it was hardcore people. I mean, Kevin Taylor, Mike yep. Dory, like hardcore people. They fought. They just challenged each other. It was they kicked each other's ass, like, and it was super hardcore. I mean, it's changed a lot now over the years. Now Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is, is way up there, right? Yep. But um, all the clubs are great. And, so. and all the clubs are great. The guys running them are, are, are great, the instructors. Um, one guy sticks out in my mind, Craig, uh, Chris Sutherland over in Fit Plus. Craig, Chris? I, I oh. always get his name mixed so up. Sorry if we I'm, get the name mixed I'm up because really we know there's, I think there's two. It's either Craig it's Chris. or Chris. I think it's Chris. Sorry, but what school is he at? At Fit Plus. Okay, the guy at Fit Plus. Anyways, he's like, we've, uh, there's a few of us uh, that have been over there. Again, always very welcoming, yeah. open. Uh, he just sticks out in my mind as a guy that, uh, you know, came up through the ranks, has been at Fit Plus his, his whole career, um, knows his stuff, still competes. Wow. Um, I mean, another guy like TJ Grant. Like he, oh, I show legend. up, I, yeah. I show up and they're still, they're, they're, they're coaching you from the sides. They're, they're, they're encouraging you along, you know, you're rolling with a guy that's 200 pounds, is black belt. And it's just like, yeah, try this, try that. They're helping you along. So mm -hmm. just that sort of encouraging atmosphere is, is, is great. Not just for, for myself, but like for, for the, I want to say the sport as a whole. Right. So with Japanese Jiu Jitsu, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, obviously wrestling, which translate into submission grappling, and you're a good striker too. People don't know that, but you're very good at striking as well. Um, kind of makes you very well rounded. But now you're specifically focusing on your ground game, which means in when in two weeks are you going somewhere? Um, yeah, I actually just got my belt uh, approved by IBJJF like Ooh. yesterday. Wow! So I now can sign up for. Uh, there's a few of us from Half Ice BJJ. Uh, going to World Masters, so I'm going to compete at nice. Uh, what is it, Master Bracket for Brown Belt? So, <laughs> which is nice, yeah. Because trying to, I've I've looked to compete locally. It's just they take brown, blacks, purples at all age groups and combine them together. Okay, uh, I kind of really want to see where I stand at yeah, my own age, at my own belt level. Yeah, and, going and against go people you have never met before, never met. and just uh, hoping. So who's going? Who's going? Myself, Amit, and Jack are going. We're going. Okay. It's kind of a, a, a threesome. I'm hoping to, we're also hoping to do the Toronto Open a few weeks after that as oh, well. Wow. Uh, again, to compete at age and uh, yep. belt level. Uh, see, see what happens. I yeah. Have, I have all the confidence in the world and absolutely no expectations. So I'm just, just going Just go and have fun. fun. If not, exactly. you're in Vegas. <laughs> exactly. You're in Vegas. Uh, have you, I know you, do you follow many of the tournaments? Because, I mean, I know yourself and me, we both competed in the really early tournaments. Yep. And now they've, there's so many in the province. Uh, not a very political question, but do you think there's too many? Do I think there's too many? You can be honest. Um, I, I think there's, I think right now there's, there's just enough. My, my honest opinion. Yes, that's what we're I here think for. That, I think the guys running the ones at a Truro, I can't remember what it's called. The, they, they've reduced their prices to fifty dollars to compete. Sorry if we don't remember all the names. We're slightly older. I know Hence, that the, yeah, the gray-haired guys and geese. I know the. The tournaments that have been happening in Halifax, they're eighty, ninety, hundred dollars to yeah, compete. Yeah, but um, professional, and they are yeah. very well Shout run. Shout out to Graham. It's just yeah. he's been here teaching at Manimal, and he's trying to elevate to like IBJJF standards. So. And they're they're very well run. I've heard nothing but good things. I just know from uh, talking with people yep. that the barrier to entry, the the cost for entry, has, is is a little high. Of course, and that people would compete. If the if if it wasn't eighty ninety bucks to yeah. compete, 
there would be more, they would get more people to come out. That's, of course. That's and my if I was thing. like a lawyer to defend him, I'd say, yeah, but the facility that he rents, Absolutely. very expensive, Absolutely. very expensive. So Absolutely. he's trying to build a good thing. So again, uh, it's, it's good. I don't so want to be conscious. No, 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 no. That's, but that's what we're talking about yeah. here. It's all good. We don't talk too much politics on here about clubs, even nope. though I know the history of them all. So. <laughs> you know, to, to get to the politics thing, um, I've, I've taken the same attitude that, that you have. I don't want politics. I don't want to deal with politics when it comes yeah. to martial arts. I just want to train. Exactly. Um, I recently went through a change in clubs. Uh, yep. And when I talked to, uh, uh, talked to the guys at the new club, that's exactly what I said. I walked in, they knew who I was. They knew where I trained. And I was like, look, man, I just want to train. I don't want any politics. I just want to learn, yep. um, be a member uh, and contribute. And they're like, yeah, no worries, man. You're, you're always welcome. So I, I take that same attitude. It's like no politics. Exactly. It's just, I think the just trend too with clubs nowadays, and again, we're going to wrap this up shortly because I think uh, I'm going to get really close here and figure out how many times. Oh, we still got a few more minutes. Uh, a lot of clubs now are really working on the seven days a week, yep. morning, noon, and night classes. Mm -hmm. And it's for, you know, I remember you and me back in the old days, you know, Tuesday, Thursday nights, six yep. to eight. That was, you know, that's typical most martial arts. You went twice a week, you trained, you went home. Clubs weren't never full-time then, even though we had a full-time spot. We didn't have day classes. But now, to have a really successful club, morning, noon, and night, seven days a week. Location. Okay. Uh, times of, like, availability of classes. Right. And then cost. Cost, and I would, yeah. I would, I would say that those three things even trump the um like how good the the owner or the 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 instructor is meaning yeah. that it usually with if you're offering classes morning noon and night seven days a week there's different instructors teaching it's not just one that's right and usually you'll find an instructor that you like and you'll stick with them and you'll attend their classes or you change your schedule but to get into the get into the the, the art to the sport you'll find some like at least with Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, mm -hmm. I think is where we're talking about. Yep. Yeah. People will, people will come based on the availability of schedule. And I think even, uh, I mean, our club's only small here at Manimal, but at Halifax BJJ, which I'm pretty sure is the largest club. Well, they are the largest club in the land of Canada, but Absolutely. I mean, um, big club, uh, 95% recreational, maybe. Uh, absolutely. I don't know. Someone can correct me on that, but. Most people just come, they train, they want to learn the art, get a workout, go home. That's it. And then you have your people that are competitors. The competitors, and, yeah. And then whether they work their way up, you know, locally, nationally, internationally, and then obviously like the highest caliber, like in the world, it's totally, who's your favorite? Do you have different people you like to watch? I, uh, I'll be honest with you. I'm actually kind of, the, the ADC is com coming up and yeah. the Craig Jones Invitational. Oh, yeah. I'm It'll looking be forward kind to that. of toggling between the two as it goes on. Yeah. Um, I know Craig Jones is trying to bring money into the sport or at least pay the athletes. I Perfect. Think that's, I think that's great. Um, and hopefully that he'll, he'll elicit some change in what ADCC is going to do for their athletes. Um, I think the ADC is based, ADCC is based on, uh, like prominence right now. It's like the Olympics of, of the sport. Right. Uh, do I, I, I've always liked Gary Tonin. He's always been kind of, he's the short yep. scrappy guy. Um, ever since, uh, he fought Cron Gracie way back in like 2012 and had a most amazing match you've ever seen where he got out of an arm bar. Uh, for, amazing. It was incredible. So Gary Tonin's a guy that I like to watch. I kind of try and mirror my style yep. after. Him. I know there's a lot of new guys coming up, uh, but again, Gary Tonin, uh, he, he's my guy. That, That's that awesome. Gotta, with that being uh, said, real quick, do you think that, because you, you've trained with Hoist Gracie a couple times too, yeah. we both have, uh, we've hosted him here in Halifax. Um, he's you know, kind of an old school jiu-jitsu guy, yep. which is still awesome, no question about it. But um, how do you find the comparison now with like the sports? I find Brazilian Jiu Jitsu to me is like the Jeet Kune Do of grappling because Jeet Kune Do is it's about evolving. Yeah. And Brazilian Jiu Jitsu evolves constantly. Every oh. day you're like, what's this? Yep. And so the level of artists, practitioners now compared to, you know, say early 90s when we kind of first became popular locally. Um, you notice obviously a huge difference. Oh, it's a huge <laughs> difference. Like even, even like the young guys coming up. Now they're doing so many different techniques. Like there's a new technique online every day. 
Right. Um, I, Hoist Gracie from the original Gracie Jiu Jitsu lineage, uh, was, I guess what judo was way back when, right? So yeah, there was some strikes in it. There was some yep. takedowns, there was some groundwork and the Gracie's really took that groundwork aspect at, you know, and I want to say perfected it. Of course. Um, when it comes to, it, I think it's now it's more evolved more into a sport. Yeah. It's really, it's gotten away from the, I don't, I don't want to say it, like maybe art aspect of it. Right. But it's more sport based now. Yeah. Uh, I know if you read comments online, it's like, oh, oh yeah. you pull guard on this. Yeah. Thing, you in the head. You know, yeah, you will. I'm on different forms. People do that all the time. But, but and, and like you've always said, it's like it's the, the art is only as good as the person applying it. That's right. Right. So like, would you go pull guard in the street? Absolutely not. Exactly. But would you know, would you know how to defend yourself? Probably somebody grabs you. I mean, that's great. I, you know, if somebody grabbed me in the street, it'd be like, okay, thanks buddy. Like, yeah. That's the best thing you could do. Exactly. Right? I always say, you know, it, it, it all comes down to the instructor exactly. or the student, the individual. It's not the art. It's the individual, it's the individual and how they apply that art. Absolutely. I could do a really fancy Kung Fu double finger thrust to your neck in the UFC if I fought in it, because I would set it up by doing a jab, cross, elbow smash, knock you out. And as you're falling down, I'd go. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. So, hey, I mean, I did it right. Exactly. Anyway, it's uh, yeah, I, I believe with the, the, the evolution of the sport is actually bringing more people in. Um, and I, I was actually talking with a guy yesterday uh, uh, when I was training. Guy, sa guy, he was like, my shoulder's sore, my hips sore, my knees sore. And he used to play football. And he's like, I've, I've, my body's destroyed from playing football. And then he came into jiu-jitsu. And I, that was funny because I stopped playing rugby to, and I came to jiu-jitsu right. because I had, I had gotten concussions playing rugby. I went, I've been to the hospital once doing jiu-jitsu in like 21 years now. And it was... I want to say last year when somebody accidentally fell on my face. Oh, yeah. Right? And that it was, was the, here, most, by the, way. <laughs> the fluke thing that's ever happened. Yeah. And, and that I broke these two fingers because they got bent all the way back. Super fluke. But yeah, I've gotten, you know, some bumps and bruises, yeah. you know, uh, you know, my knees hurt or my shoulders hurt, but nothing like terrible that's career ending or that will require surgery. So yeah. I think that aspect of, you know, jujitsu, whether it's Japanese jujitsu or, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is, is, is moving forward. People are realizing I can still be very active. I can still progress, you know, my confidence and my, my being meaning like I can be a, my confidence, my ability to become a better person, to learn something new, get a workout doing it, you know, yeah. A stripe on your belt or new belt is, it's great for that, you know, confidence level as you move forward. Um, but just as a, as a person as a whole, and I think it's, it, 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 the community is, is very welcoming and once people make their way in through the door, they, they realize all this and that's why they stick with it and that's why it's growing. Exactly. And, and more people in the sport is, is, is great. Absolutely. And um, if I was not to counter that, I would say, as because I do various martial arts, all martial arts do the same thing. It just all depends on how it's taught. Exactly. So you could do kickboxing until you're 90 years old. Just how you train it. Exactly. I mean, you could do any style of martial arts, all how it's taught. And so, but I find um, my sparring is not that great as much anymore. My timing's off, my distancing's off because I've been focusing more on grappling. Mm -hmm. So I still love striking. It's my first, one of my first arts, but um, I find grappling a lot easier on the body, yep. you know, and uh, just fun. And so real quick before we, gi, no gi, I know you like both. I like both. Yeah. I think there's an application for both. Um, I think starting out, like most people start out in the gi and lately the trend is to move towards no gi. Uh, I, I, I like both. I've always right. liked both. They have a different application. Uh, although I have to say as I lately have been training mainly gi because yeah, the tournament, the masters. exactly. But as, uh, no gi, I was no gi for a long time. Uh, just training that most or like specifically, uh, back and forth. Although as I'm getting a little older, I'm finding it's a little easier to control the younger guys with the gi because you can pin yeah. them, hold them down. Um, and there's yeah, there's even a, those holds you were showing today with the gi yeah. and the shoulder pressure. And, it, and it's a little bit John, easier. The John Thomas techniques of arching and oh man. It's, so that that's crazy. that's great, but you know at the same time, like I'd still do like to go. I I like to compete in terms of like 
whether it's in the training room or whether it's at a competition, I like that idea of like com competing, like putting the effort forward, you know, learning new techniques, doing the application. And I find with the Nogi, like there's a lot of, there's a lot of good competitors out there yeah. now. So uh, I can apply that in that, in that sort of. Awesome. Aspect. Uh, just to finish up, I usually have a list, but I, I don't. Uh, a couple quick questions. Uh, we're Canadian. We're not really Americans. Uh, I said that in my last video, but uh, give me your Mount Rushmore of martial artists that you, you know, if you could pick a Mount Rushmore, it could be one, two, three, or four that you would say. These are the guys. Yeah. Like, you know, we're talking old masters, whoever, like movie star, Jean-Claude Van Damme. I don't know. <laughs> oh man, that's a hard, that's a really hard yeah, question. It could be uh, people that, you know, you, you look up to online. So, uh, Mount Rushmore guys, well, obviously yourself would be up ah. there because, and, and, and I, it's, I'm not trying to be cheesy, I know, I know. yourself, uh, Raj, because he was my first uh, instructor. Raj Pure, Japanese Jiu-Jitsu black belt. And, he, he, uh, was, uh, he was my first instructor for sure. Yeah. Uh, he was, uh, he's Punjabi, big fella. Also was a taxi driver for like 20 years. Just all the fought every night. Every night he got in a fight because people called him names. He would pull them out of the taxi, beat them up, throw them away. And yeah, just anyway. the most vicious moves. Yeah. That, vicious. I, I, like I, I, things that he's taught us. I'm like, Oh my God, that's aw yeah. like, awesome. But I, I just like, how, how could you do that? Raj? <laughs> yeah. Anybody yeah. else? Oh uh, man. Okay. I, I guess going back into, I, I'm just, I guess locally, like, <laughs> I don't know. Like I, I right. Steve, well, uh, Steve is one of those guys. Steve Greencorn, shout out to him. Yeah. He's one of those guys. Um, and I guess, uh, uh, Jack Cameron, cause he's been always been a good mentor to me as well. Yeah. Whether it's the judo way back in the day, uh, at the Oxford street location yep. or now. And We're going to inter interview him coming up to Jack Cameron. Everyone knows him. He's well known in the community. He used to be an instructor at Bushido Kai for years. Long time judo guy. We'll talk more about that guy later. Yeah. Uh, any books that you follow? Any books that I follow? Yeah, it could be anything, any mm -hmm. subject. I could be uh, on psychedelic mushrooms. I don't psychedelic know. Psychedelic <laughs> mushrooms. Uh, no, I, I'll, I'll keep it martial arts based. I guess right now the Jiu Jitsu University Sala mm, Rivera. That was about a good that one. Today. That 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 has a lot of good information in it. Uh, no, I just cool. I'm, I'm, any movies? I've gotten into spy books. Lately, okay, so good. good. Spy one. books are good. Uh, movies. movies. Man, you know, I'm hitting you up with Band these. of Brothers. Is the is Band the best. of Brothers is that series? That's it. The whole series it was amazing. Awesome. I've watched it three times, That's and awesome. every time I watch it, I cry. I love it. Oh man, especially when they talk. The older fellas are yep. on there. Oh man, just I think about it. And, uh, yep. Yeah, Band exactly. of Brothers. The Band movie. Of Brothers. Awesome. Still You're a reservist as well. Uh, yeah. Yes. How long have you been doing that? Uh, since 2007. Wow. So, Do you have like a position or? Uh, I'm say, yeah. yeah uh, I'm currently the OPSO at the uh, Halifax Rifles. Okay. Right. So you're I, an avid gun collector, shooter, all that yeah. stuff too, right? Yeah. Hunter, fishing, Hunter, hunting, the fishing, whole works. Outdoors, everything, yeah. gardening. So when the apocalypse happens, we're wrapping it up now. Mark lives about 10 minutes from me. That's where I go Come first. On, over. <laughs> I got uh, you, anything you want to end with? No, man, it's been great. I very much, I always appreciate coming out and training with you. Good. Um, I know when, uh, people are asking me, it's like, oh, you're out at Ray's. Like, do you still trade with them? It's like, yes, I, in my heart, I still do yes. as much as I can Of course. Uh, between training kids right now. Uh, it's, it's always a pleasure to come back. It's yep. a nice pleasure to talk to you. So awesome. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I will leave it with, uh, okay guys, always remember the uh, most important thing with martial arts. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, because that's what this podcast or this video thing is about. Research within your group and research outside your group. That will lead to the discovery of new material or the creation of new material. It's Jeet right. Kune Do way. All right, Mark. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Always good. Woo!